All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see, I'm on Mac OS. I wanted to make this short video to break the pattern, so to say, uh, because I've always been a big fan of Mac OS. I'm not talking of the operating system itself, of course, not Apple or the Apple products in general. Uh, in fact, this system is actually running at the moment on my Xiaomi Notebook Pro. It's a temporary solution, of course, uh, just to explore and play a little bit with the modern versions of the OS. And as I said in my previous videos, I really don't hate any OS, although I use GNU Linux as my primary environment, as my daily driver, so to say. And I used to like Mac OS and to use it daily in the past years uh, because it's got a couple of interesting advantages, uh, namely being, of course, a Unix-based system uh, and a system that can run pretty much any POSIX-compliant program. And, you know, you can even actually run Sorg applications on any with the right configuration of course and so yeah my class is a good OS and it's fairly stable and reliable even in a condition like this which is definitely not optimal it's got a great software choice it's fairly customizable and that's of course what I want to talk today customization I don't mean graphical customization uh, which you can certainly do up to a certain point but I mean customizing the way it works so, let's take a look at how I customized this installation uh, to gain by some of the functionality that I have on Linux and on i3, of course. Uh, by the way, the first thing to know is that, is that this page on GitHub, which is called ryzenice.github.io, uh, is a very good starting point. It gives you a list of different softwares, window managers, hacky demons, etc. to use on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Then the first thing you want to do is install Homebrew, uh, which is pretty much sort of a package manager for Mac OS uh, that works in Ruby and that will allow you to install a bunch of useful stuff. And as you can see, it installs with curl, uh, which is uh, a utility, which many users not only of Linux world are certainly familiar with and which is included in Mac OS, of course. And then, using Homebrew, I've installed ChunkWM, which is a tiling window manager for Mac OS, and also SKHD, which is instead a hotkey daemon. Uh, it basically handles your key combinations and what the system should do when you, when you press a specific key combination. So, uh, oh yeah, my terminal elimination of choice is, of course, uh, iTerm. Uh, it's got a couple of interesting features that the full terminal doesn't have. Uh, honestly, it's not indispensable, but yeah, you can't properly raise a system without changing the default terminal emulator, can you? And uh, yeah, a good alternative seems to be Kitty, which heavily relies on the GPU to sort of be lighter on your system resources. I didn't try it, but it seems good. Uh, anyway, as I said, I used Homebrew, or just brew, the command is just brew, to install SKHD and chunk WM. And you just want a simple install command, as you will do with any other package manager. Uh, but brew can also be used to manage uh, services. And in this case, you want to enable the SKHD and the chunk WM services. And now I've also already done it, so let's just have a look at how these two programs work together. They're basically the core of this video. Everything works thanks to them. And by opening the config files, which are usual, usual RC files in your home directory, we can immediately see that chunkwm has nothing else than a bash script as a config file, because it heavily depends on the chunkc command which is its console counterpart, so to say, and it sends comments to the window manager. Uh, you know, it works a little bit like BSPWM in this sense. So I'm basically using a modified version of the default configs here because they're quite good by default. And one important thing for me is that the first workspace, as you can see, is set to floating mode. Um, so yeah, I have two desktop or workspaces, whatever you want to call them, uh, by default that I never close. And on boot up, my first workspace, my first workspace is set 
to floating modes so I can open windows, move them around, open more new windows, basically like nothing ever happened. And this is nice because uh, when I want to start using the advantages of the tiling WM, the tiling window manager, to start doing more serious work, I can very easily switch to the desktop number two and open windows in tiling mode but as you can see i have a couple of rules over here so that specific applications always open in flowing mode no matter what workspace you are those are apps that you definitely don't want to fill your screen uh, when you open them another important customiz customization i made is making the window border completely transparent you know, Chunk WM can create custom called window borders, and by default, that's this border. Now, I don't actually remember if it was pure white, uh, but anyway, let's make it pure white so we can see it better. Uh, so, let's save a file and restart the service, and I have a bash alias for that. And it's a little slower than Linux to do this, this kind of things. But there we have it an ugly white border. But here's the worst thing, and let me make the window floating so, so yeah, you can make, of course you can make tiled windows float with a key combination. And as you can see, the window border won't precisely follow the window when I move it. <laughs> this is a terrible thing with this window manager, so I just disabled it, I don't care that much. So let's just restore the full transparent border. Uh, but speaking of window borders, one thing in that that can be useful is the resize mode. You see, this window manager, of course, has a resizing mode for tiled windows. And when you enter it, I've made so that the border becomes reddish, so that you, you know, you're in resizing mode. And you can resize the selected window with Vim keys. Then you press escape and you go back to normal mode and the borders disappear. So let's take a look at the skhd config file instead. So at the beginning, I put the combinations to open new programs, and you need to be careful here uh, because macOS uses the super key or the common key uh, for basically anything and has a lot of key combinations by default for different applications. And so you need to pay attention to avoid conflicts. Anyway, Common plus Enter opens a new terminal, of course, and Common plus X opens Chrome. Uh, then with Alt and Vim keys, you can change the focus window with the keyboard, uh, but I also added the arrow keys here. Uh, then we have the swap window function, a couple of comments for the floating windows the, so that you can tile them a little bit like you do on Windows and on GNOME, I guess. And yeah, for floating windows, Chunk WM actually uses a grid layout to basically handle where they should be positioned. It's not hard to understand, the manual is pretty clear, but however, you need to try a couple of times to fit your monitor and your preference. Then comments from creating a new desktop, I left the defaults here, uh, you can basically create a new desktop with shift or control and then alt and n, uh, depending on if you want to move or not the active windows there. Then here we have a couple of default options that I won't cover in detail of course. And an interesting one is the rotate tree option. You see, Chunk WM by default uses a binary tree layout that's similar to the default of DWM or BSPWM, for instance. So, if you want, you can very easily rotate this tree when you have more than two windows open with Alt plus X. And at the end of the file is the resize mode, which I've added, again, both with Vim keys and the arrow keys. So this was my idea of uh, a nice window managing system for macOS on macOS. And another thing I wanted to very quickly mention is my Vim configuration. You may have noticed that my Vim looks anything but default. I'm using here a slightly modified VimRC file that I found on GitHub from this guy called Fiza, Fiza Dev. And it was nice. I didn't have the time to analyze it deeply, but I'll certainly do. And I liked it because it uses a good selection of plugins and settings to make Vim not only look good, but it also adds a couple of useful functions like autocomplete. And especially for Python, which I'd like to learn, uh, this is very useful and very nice. So again, the VimRC by Fizadev on GitHub. So this was a very brief overview on how you can customize different aspects of the environment, even on macOS. And this can bring to very interesting 
interesting results. I've seen people on Reddit doing crazy stuff on macOS. You can, for instance, even hide the top bar and substitute it with a bar called Übersicht, uh, which pretty much stands for overview in German. And uh, then this bar can be customized with different models and graphics. Uh, there are also a lot of interesting presets out there. It's very nice. Of course, in my opinion, this works graphically speaking, if you're only using terminal applications, because once you start opening all the windows, the macOS default graphics comes back in and it sort of ruins the atmosphere, so to say. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little different video and if so, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel, that really helps and I really appreciate that and I will see you very soon. Ciao!